Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial. We're going to do some uh, remedial engineering. We are going to test bolts on the old uh, Cockford Ollie. <laughs> the Cockford Ollie Model 69 Torque Structomatic. We got it all warmed up. We're going to test Chinesium bolts versus Morgan made versus cat bolts versus 12 point bolts. Speaking of immediately now, and in case you missed it in the f previous 500 videos, I've been at this a while now, there's some, there's some nuggets on fasteners in there somewhere, but getting back to it, a fastener is a cylinder with a wedge wrapped around it, a helical wedge wrapped around it. So the further you jam a wedge into something, the more force it has. The same thing with this, the further you jam that wedge in, the more clamping load it has. And depending on the material that is the grade of fastener we can have more or less clamping load ultimately what we're trying to do is to jam that wedge in at just the perfect goldilocks amount so we get the correct stress in the material and that stress could be in a low grade of bolt it could be 60,000 psi 60,000 psi that's a lot of stress or in a higher grade like an L9 or, or an L or a grade 8 bolt, we're speaking in SAE here, not SI, so sorry for you metric fanboys. You'll yeah, you'll have to figure it out on your own. The units might change, but the story stays the same. So what we're doing is we're jamming this wedge in there to get the proper stress in the bolt. So in this case, a very high grade of bolt probably 120,000 PSI of stress we want in here. Now, certain things affect that stress, the cross-sectional area. So this is a trap for young gamers. Guys will say, uh, guys will look at a fine thread fastener or a coarse thread fastener, and they'll think to themselves, well, of course the coarse thread fastener needs, it's gonna be stronger because there's more meat in the threads there. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. The fine thread fastener is always stronger because it doesn't fail on the threads. It fails because the stress in the material is too high. That's uh, that the root of that thread is 0.462, and the root of this thread 0.42. So this is actually a smaller bolt. It's a smaller bolt and that's why it can take less torque. And you'll see that in the torque specs when you see a, a fine thread fastener, it has higher torque specs. Again, because we're trying to get the correct amount of stress in the material. Now for instrumentation, in order to get the data, we need some visuals. So we've got the osmeloscope and it is hooked up to a transducer over here and a low pass filter. Actually the transducer is right back here and it's just telling it's, it's, it's fairly linear. As the pressure goes up, the voltage here increases. So we can see how much force this torque structomatic is putting out. As an additional visual aid, we've got the analog gauge so we can double check and make sure, you know, it's kind of an idiot check. It's also a nice visual to see how much stress is going on. But the very accurate reading is going to be on the oscilloscope. So as we torque this up, we'll see this voltage reading rise and you'll be able to see when it fails and all sorts of neat stuff. And now we're gonna go with the granddaddies of them. We do have a Chinesium grade eight bolt. We have an American made grade eight bolt. We have a high strength, uh, this would be kind of like a head bolt style with the 12 point. And then we have an L9. Uh, made in the US in a extremely strong bolt. So we're gonna see what these do Here we got the grade 8 American fastener and getting my right arm workout today so I'll give the left arm a workout later on ah S and M. That's what I'm into She sleeps and I masturbate. Oh fuck the plight of married men everywhere ah. Yeah, she's starting to yield. Woo! Let's 
Let's have a look at that. So it's important in this test to be nice and smooth, just as it's important when you're doing, when you're torquing head bolts or you're torquing any kind of bolt to be smooth. And we see the results when you're not smooth. We get a torque spike here. That's out of range. Where are you? There we go. 744 there. And that was just me reefing on her a little aggressively. If we look at this, you see exactly what's going on. Builds up, yields, 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 yields. Now we're putting energy into it. We're taking all the ductility, all the, all the grains in that steel. We're taking all the movement out of those grains. It's getting stronger and stronger. It doesn't look like it's getting stronger and stronger, but because that surface area is getting stretched out, it's getting smaller and smaller. The material is getting stronger, but overall the unit is staying the same. And then just, we take all the ductility out. Now it's brittle and it just breaks like glass. Now that American made fastener, that did pretty well. 100 and, 110 foot pounds lubed should only get 80 foot pounds of torque. So we're 20, 30% over. And it handled it pretty good. And as you can see, you can over torque it. You can over torque a fastener and you just put a little bit of stretch into it. But if you keep going, you, what you're doing is you're just stretching it out more and more and more until it fails. But it takes a fuck of a lot to make a fastener fail. So you got to be doing something pretty damn wrong in order to get it to break. Like there was clues beforehand type deal. I'm racing against the clock here. Son of a diddly. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Why am I racing? Just to get her to break, but we already know it's yielded, and the yield is the, the highest point, and the point we're actually looking for. So, let's have a look. See over here. Well, 788. What the fuck over? <laughs> uh, a Chinese bolt is stronger. Stronger than the American made bolt. Now 788 will knock that first one off. And we're at 784, which is 784. Which is close to 135 foot pounds. Shit. That's pretty fucking strong. Now the L9, bad mamma jamma. Thicker head on her, too. Woo! Get the hangover now. We're building up here. Let me see. Max 768. That's for the L9. It's supposed to be far, far stronger than the Grade 8, but it's roughly equivalent to the Chinesium Grade 8, surprisingly. It's around 135 foot-pounds, excuse me. We'll just go over here. We want to see this section right in here, where it's still building up, and then it evens off. So let's have a look at that. Other way. There we go. 760, 756, 760, yeah, 768, there's the peak there. So we're right around 133, 135 foot-pounds. Now that's lubed, of course. So lubed to grade 8 is only looking for 80 foot-pounds, so that's very, very much overkill. Here's the high-strength 12-point course we're going to try. It'd be interesting. On account of not having a half inch 12 point socket, we'll see if this stands up. I don't know if I'm getting tired. 
it is getting late in the day. Oh. Or if this thing actually is just tough as shit. Holy fuck. Oh, there we go. She's gonna give. She's gonna give. Yeah. Oh, fuck. She gave way, but she's holding on. Holy shit, wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> I stripped out the nut. Well, shit. Yeah, look at that. Stripped right. I you see a show. Stripped. <laughs> so he gets those in for a second try. Fucking brain dead motherfucker. You see, she's chewed up pretty good, but that's all the nut. Now, interesting point about this. The bolt is so strong that it pulls the nut through. Now, it should only take but three threads in steel to have a full uh, torque capable coupling. So why are nuts so long? Well, just for redundancy, department of redundancy type deal. But three threads is really all it takes. And we see this thing is so strong that we had something like six threads and it pulled through. So what we need is a type of coupling nut, but it needs to fit in our tooling and something. So I got to come up with a little bit better situation here. It never occurred to me that my nuts would give me trouble. Call it male patterned blindness. But in this case, we got the grade eights. I made sure there's two slots here, two little markings. That's grade eight. If they're further apart, that's grade five. If there's no markings at all, abandon all hope ye who enter. Now what we'll do is we'll double them up and hopefully get them close enough so that if this one starts to stretch, the next one takes up the load. I have my doubts, but you gotta piss with the cock you got. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Have a look at that. We put a lot of energy into that guy. I preloaded this guy a little bit. And we see we're right at yield, right, right off the hop. 768. 768. So that's the same. That's incredible. 770 is uh, 135. Now that was edifying and interesting, all in the same ball of whack. I would have would have never guessed that the Chineseium would be as good as it is. So I got to thinking to myself, well, maybe they overbuild them because their quality control is so variable. They're all over the place that they get a ton up, up, way up high, but they also get a few with interstices that are way down low and they need to, they need to overbuild them because their QC is not that great or quality assurance QA. I always change the terms, but these are actually not Chineseium. These are from Taiwan, these JH. So the JH marked heads, as long as you get them from a reputable source, they're skookum as frig. As far as these, like they're, they're as strong as, they're as strong as these for a quarter, a tenth of the price. The American made ones, they're, they're fine, but they're not as strong. <laughs> they're, they're not as strong as the JH. It, the, the mind absolutely boggles. So this is one way to test them. Maybe not the best way to test them. There is another way. We can do it straight pull and we'll just pull them apart. That'll be in a future video. And that way, what we can do is compare results. See if our testing is cromulent. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.